Welcome back to theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's live streaming television show. We're here in San Francisco at the first Node Summit. And I've got with me two guys who are uh, really key in the Node community. I've got Daniel Shaw, who is uh, runs the Node Ups, uh, or uh, actually, what is it called? It's just Node Up? So Node Up is a podcast, NodeUp.com, at Node Up on Twitter. And um, the Node Up Live is something we organized right before Node Summit. Okay. And we also have Chris Williams, who's the organizer of JSConf, which was the event that, uh, as Ryan Dahl told us earlier, is the place that uh, Node, uh, Node.js basically launched. And uh, Chris also uh, is involved in a startup. I think it's probably the coolest startup I've seen here. It's called... Oh, you're being too kind. Uh, Thank you, though. I definitely appreciate uh, that. For those of uh, you who are aging voting. Aging safely. Vote. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, Dan also works at uh, Voxer, which right. is you know a, a big Node.js uh, adopter. We had interviewed Matt Ramey earlier. Uh, so, w where do you guys uh, think that the Node community is going? I mean, it, it's grown it's grown incredibly uh, quickly. I mean, is is it a sustainable growth? Is it in danger of of growing too fast? It's uh, you know it's we're, we're at uh, a real sweet spot right now where it's small close-knit and everybody knows each other. Uh, we're definitely going to be going across the threshold in the next year or so where we're bigger than the, the, the group of people that, that are, you know, you can keep into your, your social group. So it's going to be a real challenge for us. We're, it's something that, that a lot of us are thinking about and that we discussed uh, uh, at length at uh, summer camp last, last year. Um, we're concerned about it and doing our best to, you know, be inclusive and, and you know make everybody feel at home in the no community. Chris, so uh, I kind of have, have a bit of a different perspective, and and by no means is that contrarian, or am I trying to be contrarian? Um, my my background is mainly from different languages using JavaScript in different ways, and the general broader JavaScript language itself. I have a concern that I, I voice sometimes, sometimes louder than others, that the rapid growth may actually be the downfall of Node as well as also the benefit. Um, you saw it a bit with Rails as it rapidly grew and it became, it became the monster that it actually was trying to combat. And right. I worry that Node will just, if it doesn't learn from the mistakes of previous communities, it's doomed to repeat it. Um, we see trends in computing programming where the new shiny thing lasts for maybe seven years, and by that seventh year, a new, new shiny thing. And in this case, it's Node, and eventually it'll be something else. Uh, I think that the best thing the Node community could do, those of you at home, would be to actually look at arguments that the Scala community, the Erlang community, the uh, Python community, the Ruby community, are making against Node, and instead of fighting it with, oh, you, you're wrong, um, try to understand the argument, embrace it, figure out if there's a solution and a path that can work, or if it's just a complete troll argument and just ignore it. Um, I worry that the hype actually ends up hurting Node on both sides, because there's a lot of negative hype as well as also positive hype. And if we could figure out as programmers how to just be programmers and not be Rubyists or Node people, um, I think we'd all be happier. And I think uh, there's been a lot of talk here about polyglots, but seriously, it's right tool, right task. Node can't solve everything. Um, it just can't. I mean, I, do you disagree? Or? I don't disagree, no. Oh, and, okay. uh, no, I, I, I totally agree. And, and uh, you know, the, the lessons of Rails and, you know, its meteoric rise and, and how it you know, became a little bit too clickish, maybe. Um, you know, want to try to, you know, avoid having that in in Node, and that's that's it's a challenge. I mean, the there's a there's a, a large segment of the Node community that's here in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I don't know if someone coming from outside of San Francisco, you get a sense that like. All the cool kids are here, and then there is that sense. Right. I, yeah, so you know, I moved out here uh, at the beginning of this year mm -hmm. because um, I really was excited about programming Node, and I was working uh, programming Java, and I wanted to uh, program Node, you know, as my as my day job. 
in San Francisco, uh, you know, a year ago was the only place that you could really do it and you know make a real career out of it. Um, that's starting to change now. There, there are lots of great opportunities all over the world, mm. but I, I, I very much see that there's, um, you know, it's still San Francisco centric, and there's you know a lot of core that's here. Well, I, I think that maybe it's that a lot of companies are doing it, but not as public, right? Um, which is part of growing up. It's uh, people don't want to put out that they're using it yet because it's a, is this going to succeed? We don't want to necessarily be the ones out on the forefront and get cut by the razor, but we want to be out at the forefront so that way when it stabilizes, we're right there and we're kicking right. butt. Um, I know that I live in D.C., so I'm about as far from San Francisco as I think you can get in the United States, and uh, it's a different culture. We're still dealing with large enterprise government contracts that demand Java. And so in some realms, it's a different type of world, but by no means does that limit you. I know just through the Node Jam, there was at least four companies out of DC that right. are doing all Node-based programming, which is really cool to see. Right. Maybe not all, but hybrids of Node and other languages. Yeah, I, I, there was actually an impressive percentage of companies in Node Jam that are not from San Francisco. You know, there's this core group of, of the <laughs> Node uh, community that's, that's here in San Francisco. But, you know, as, as Node Jam demonstrates, you know, it's getting adoption all over the United States. And, you know, uh, I was in Italy over Christmas and, you know, got to go meet the guys at, at the, uh, the Rome Node uh, meetup group. And, you know, they're, they're trying their best to uh, bring Node and, and explore Node. You know, they're going against the grain with this, you know, uh, for them it's a really, really new technology. You know, in, uh, it, here in San Francisco, you know, we've, we've kind of accepted Node and it's quote unquote proven. Um, they're, you know, just trying to introduce it at their jobs and justify, um, you know, using Node as, uh, uh, on their products. And when you say proven... Proven. Do like, you want to put that in like quotes? No, no, like proven, like uh, thumbs proven up. That, okay. Proven as in, uh, you know, Voxer has uh, millions of users every day that, you know, run on top of Node. But it's and not just Node. It's also running on C. You guys are doing no. libpcap work. No. No? No. Okay. It's Node. It's Node. We are, we are Node, Redis, and React. So Redis and, is, and React is Erlang. Right, so we have the, so you, those you have data a, stores. I mean, you have we, different. You, we, we can't. Got a stack. Right. We have a stack. We we can't. You know, there's no sane way we can do uh, a database. Mm -hmm. And you know, the only insane person is uh, Tim Caswell uh, doing you know a database in Node. He is. Um, quite I would deep. love. To, I would love to uh, be, you know, purely in Node with a database, but you know, the right tools for the job. Right. Uh, I'm. I only want to to put the air quotes on, just because we're at arguably an infancy in the language. Right. There are things that could pop up that, just because we haven't tread through the woods Absolutely. in these pieces, um, maybe it's just my cynical view, but mm -hmm. uh, we still find security holes all over the place in V8. Uh, right. Not even in Node, not anything that Node could do, but because we rely on all these different pieces, I always get worried when we jump to proven uh, so quickly. And I'm not saying it, right, right. it might not end up being that way, but I just, I try to make everyone be a little bit right on. precautious. Uh, I think that, you know, a solid architectural way going forward. We put a lot of effort you into, you know, making Node work. And like we're, um, you know, pushing so much data that we we found, um, you know, edges in, in, in flaws inside of Node that you don't you, you wouldn't expose in an express app mm -hmm. uh, you know getting you know a, a few million hits uh, a day but you know if you're doing you know massive amounts of data um, all concurrently uh, it stresses the the language and, and we, you know we've we found issues with uh, buffers and inside of node that that basically would not have been exposed in, unless it was at that scale. So I run into different sort of things. I'm trying to scale down, no. so Node won't compile on smaller chipsets. Oh, right. Uh, and more, arguably fringe, but as ARM chipsets become more and more popular, right. it's more and more critical. Um, right. So that's why, just to put the air quotes around, 
proven proven means everywhere all the time. And, right on. Okay. Uh, air quote proven just means. We're Air using quotes. it, and right. uh, it's, it's you know we, we haven't changed it our we minds haven't, yet. We haven't gone crazy. <laughs> uh, I don't think I don't think any language, uh, closure right. included at this point, you could say that it's a proven language. It might be proven in some cases, but not all cases. Right. Um, or well, Scala has been around for a bit, but there's some, there's one of the benefits of having years underneath your belt. Right. Uh, Absolutely. JavaScript, the language has those years, uh, which is a, ben a huge benefit for Node. But we still find things that are edge cases and crazy. I'd like to get back to community. Uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> sorry. No, oh, it's, it's no problem. Uh, one thing that you know it keeps coming up when we talk about the the Java, uh, the uh, the Node.js community is how inclusive it is. Uh, but you know it, it, and as you said, that that might become more difficult as it grows. Right. But how do, how do you uh, accomplish that? Like what? How could another open source uh, community? Uh, you know, what, what, what's your advice to another community to, to, to achieve what Node.js has? Maybe not in terms of the speed of growth, but in the uh, inclusivity of it. I don't know. I'm just remembering that everyone uh, matters and they have a, a, um, their point of view is, you know, a solid contribution. And, like, we're, as a, as a language and a community, so young, you know, Someone who's old in the community is like two years. You know, it, it, that's not that that long. So, you know, people coming in and approaching new things, doing different things with Node, have new and useful uh, perspectives that uh, you know we need to to keep in mind. And you know, we might be in some subset or some corner of Node that really works for what we're working on right now. Um, but the fact that, that people are doing, using it in, in different ways makes the entire community richer and you know, makes the, the language stronger and helps us find you know, bugs that, that what we're, we're, we've been working on, that little like, segment of it that we're, we're working on, you know, is not necessarily going to stress as much. Right. And the JavaScript community, is, it, it, it seems pretty similar, uh, a pretty yeah, big umbrella, um, uh, inclusive, but it's been around longer, it's been growing. Sort of. We've so. had we've had like ebbs and flows. So sure. you had yeah. Ajax experience during sort of the bubble and the AXHR giddiness. And uh, my wife and I started JSConf uh, uh, four years ago. And one of the things that we tried to do in building JSConf was keep things small and intimate. If you actually know somebody face to face and have had a shared experience with them, you're less likely to be like that guy's a, a some nasty word um, or be very aggressive in a response. It, it's there's a human, as long as you remember there's a human, we find that community works a lot better. Um, we've, we've, every year we've tried different things, and I, I think for any other language, keeping the intimacy, the, the meeting every person, the connection, and then also having some deeper beliefs that are just beyond programming. Um, when we do JSConf, we try to make it a family event, and, and by that I mean you don't leave going, that was a good event, you leave going, I made some really deep friendships here, and you know I may not see them until I come to San Francisco once a year, but I could call up anyone and be like, "Hey, can I crash at your place?" And they'd be fine with that. Um, so we try to make it come in together, and I know other communities are doing that, and it's all in sort of picking the right values, I'd say, uh, and which seems weird. It seems like that shouldn't be in the tech sphere, but it really does matter. So like JSConf, we run the budget to zero. And whatever money we don't spend at the conference, we donate back. Um, we donated last year uh, at the, and announced it at JSConf uh, over $3,000 to gender and racial diversity outreach programs. And that sets the right tone for the community, that we want to change the lack of gender and racial diversity. But it's not something that you can just do overnight. It's something that's going to take a long period of time. So we want to get started changing future generations now. Now, something else you do that impressed me is you have the significant other track. We do. So, so that you know, when you come to the, the conference, you're not just leaving your, your spouse or your partner mm -hmm. at home, or you're not just leaving them at the hotel either. This comes from it being a husband and wife team that puts it on. <laughs> uh, my wife is awesome, and we came, I went to a conference in Toronto. It was uh, Ruby Fringe, and they actually had it. So I get no credit for coming up with the idea. It changes the whole dynamic. If you're a male or a female at a conference, there's a general tendency to go out drinking and, and 
maybe networking a little bit too much. Um, whereas if your spouse is there, it keeps it at sort of a professional level, which is very nice. And um, they are happy because they're doing stuff, they're not cooped up in the room, and it really keeps that whole family sense back in the conference. And so I encourage anyone who's running a conference to, do, to consider doing a significant other track. So it's an idea, run with it. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to say to the JavaScript community, the Node.js community, or or about the, the communities? Um, so there's something you know we're we're uh, going to be exploring uh, doing the, the live Node up uh, a little bit more, uh, looking for some venues. Uh, we might do something at South by Southwest, uh, and maybe try to do something in Europe later this year. Uh, if you're interested in sort of helping and doing that, uh, you know Linux Live is just us going out and sharing and, and talking to the community. It's not, you know, anything, it's, it's a very, you know, grassroots like a low level. Like a public forum, like town hall meetings? It's not a public forum. It's, you know, it's a group gathering. You know, some, something we have in San Francisco is almost every night there's a, some sort of a tech event and it's in an office somewhere and, you know, there's a lot of uh, speaking and, you know, what we really enjoy most is getting together and geeking out and talking about what we're working on and sharing ideas. So, you know, that's the kind of thing that we want to share. And that's one of the things we try to share with, with the podcast. And, um, you know, uh, another thing with, with NodeUp, if uh, you have ideas for, we, we've been doing deep dives, we did a deep dive on NPM, we did deep dive on database. If there are topics that you uh, wanna, um, want us to cover, um, definitely you know, at, uh, note up and uh, you know, send those our way. We look forward to, to exploring some of those more. Okay. Chris? Uh, if you're listening at home or watching at home, uh, before you go posting anything on the internet, just think, take two seconds, think, is this negative? Am I being a little bit over? Reaching, and that applies for all technology communities. I made a big call at JSConf EU this year to try to change our our mode of operation. There's a a negative bias that permeates every single media channel in, in the whole technology sphere, and it's a lot of bitter infighting, and it it really doesn't help anything. Um, if if somebody comes at you, try to take a step back, see what the problem is. Don't go immediately throwing back spears and knives and don't go plus oneing onto piles that that really you know maybe two people should just have it out, not have the audience or the arena of people cheering them on. Um, if we could do that, I think the whole technology field as as a total group could be a lot happier and a lot better place. So. Great. Well, thanks a lot, guys. We're Thank gonna you. take thanks a break and then we're gonna do a wrap up. All right. Thank, Thank you. Very you. Much. Okay, we're back, day two of Node Summit live in San Francisco, California. I'm John Furrier, and this is theCUBE, our final wrap-up session with the Silicon Angle crew, Alex Williams and Clint Finley. Um, Want to just say thanks to all you folks watching out there, Mark Hopkins and Keenan for producing. Uh, great job. Uh, we're at the end of our broadcast here at theCUBE, and Node Summit has been an amazing uh, experience uh, for me, and uh, learned a lot, met a lot of new people, uh, understood a lot more about the community and the capabilities of Node.js, which is, this is what it's all about. Node Summit is the inaugural conference for the Node community. And uh, Alex and Clint, let's just kind of wrap this up. Let's kind of put a bow on this uh, event here, and, and what did we learn? I mean, I, you know, I, I learned, you know, I'll start, I mean, I learned that Node is a lot more real and legit and high performance than I thought it was. And I kind of did my homework. You know, I was excited by the possibilities of it, um, but I really loved how, how legit it is. And, and uh, one of my comments in an earlier cube was, uh, uh, I'd categorize this as a hurricane four, uh, category four hurricane, mainly because some tiles are falling off the building roofs, trees are coming down, so there's some disruption in the technical theater and the business theater, and you're seeing that here. We're seeing VCs here, funding companies, a lot of startups, and the geeks. 
Um, so it's legit. What, what are you guys learning? Let's talk about what we've learned. Clint? I, I think what, uh, what I saw that, that's sticking with me the most is that there are some uh, pretty serious unresolved controversies in, uh, in, in the way Node relates to other technologies. Uh, uh, talking to Node skeptics, there's a lot of discussion of things like Java's Netty framework, uh, Python's Twisted framework, or the capabilities that are in the programming language Erlang. And uh, some people say, well, Node does certain things better than those, or that you can do certain things easier in Node than you can do it do with those. But on the, there's other people who say, well, no, that's not true. You could just you could totally do something so much easier in Twisted than you could in in Node. Um, and I, I haven't seen any resolution to that. So I, I guess maybe that's a cop-out. I didn't really learn something that was in an particular. Maybe that was an observation. A, um, I think that speaks to the community, too. It's a very young community. And the, the people here, a lot of them, are very innovative. And, and the, the level of sophistication I saw in the startups was, was much greater than I've seen in other, you know, in other events that I've been where there's been startup competitions. And so that's encouraging. Um, I think that there's just going to have to be some maturing in like how these front end, really these front end developers for the most part, interact with the bat, you know, and learn more about those about the systems behind it. Sure, but there there were some people here who, uh, you know, they weren't front end developers. They were, they were, were back end developers who just saw the the potential to to use uh, uh, to do something really simple were, in JavaScript. To for sure, but I think that you know, I think that there's this there is this perception of like it's real-time capabilities and you know ability to do so much so easily uh, but there's not that deeper understanding of the of the systems behind it well I mean I think that's with Theo's uh, Schlossenegger's of view that the operation side is a lot but different from the software side which is the programming side but but it's clear to me though Alex on that point that there is some advantages real advantage and we're seeing the demos here and the actual products where Very node is so. specifically a benefit like Voxer we're seeing yes. some of the, the companies upstairs handling the chat stuff there's some specific product benefits that are actually right. realized today right. um, so you know the question of how that affects ops and the scale point is a whole nother conversation. Right. I think that's worth watching. And I learned, that was my, one of my big learning points was, this, it's great on that side, the DevOps side, the programming, the rapid iteration, the agile programming, all that stuff, ain't that mm -hmm. goes on in, in open source and commercialization of these kinds of products. But in the real world, in these big enterprises, and these big service providers, there's a real ops issue around systems performance that is a whole nother league of its own. So I think that's something that I learned that, that that it's actually pretty obvious when you think about it, but it's clear that there's two two worlds. Um, so it's that was interesting. But I, I, there's some things that I really find quite compelling about you know about what we're seeing again, those real time capabilities, um, the the way that platforms are emerging for you know delivering messages. You know that, for instance, you know to multiplayer, multi MMO, what was it called? Multiplayer games. Um, and how those are, you know, and, and how those, there's kind of like this ecosystem emerging that's, that's building very, very quickly. And, you know, Stephen O'Grady was saying on, on theCUBE earlier today that he's never seen anything grow as quickly as Node.js has. And he says he's never seen um, a technology go into the trough of disillusionment so fast. And he thinks that's where we are now, and he's just not uncertain if it's been, if it's been spit out the other side, and now it's going to really gain mainstream acceptance, but I think the chances are that it will. That came up. That came up a lot, actually. The 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 excitement of Node, but also the fear, if you will, around the hype, or or is it overhyped? Yeah. I mean, it's legitimate in my mind. So I just want to make that clear. I do not think it's hyped up. However, given all the activity, it could be misconstrued as super hyped. But so that's where I think I, I, I kind of felt and, and heard specifically that, you know, wondering and we had to getting ahead of our skis as, a, as Charles Beeler said and some other folks. So that's interesting. And it, it, growing so fast, you know, it's still young. Yeah. Yeah, so. I, I think where it's going to be resilient is, is in its community. And yeah. That, and that's been really clear is that there's a community that's uh, like paradoxically, Tight knit, but really inclusive. Uh, so you know, everybody knows everybody knows each other, but they they also make a, a good effort to bring in people 
and it, and that's going to be hard to maintain that that level of inclusiveness as as the community grows. But having that having that com- that community uh, movement is is what's going to keep Node around. It's what's going to keep Node improving. Uh, the, we uh, we didn't get uh, Isaac on the guy that created uh, the Node package manager, but that's a, a big part of Node is how it how you can extend it with the with with add-ons and modules. Uh, you know, it's it's a platform. So there's you know there's other things. There's Express. There's Socket IO. There's so there's you know there's all this value being created. It's it, it's a lot like Hadoop. Like, I, we I, talked yeah, about. I mean, I, John, think, I think John, you said it last night. Like, this is the Web 2.0 era is, is essentially passed. And now we're entering a new era, and Node really is rep- Node.js is representative of that. Yeah, I mean, I think you know what Ajax was always kind of like, oh, Ajaxy kind of things on Web 2.0, but actually, Web 2.0 never really materialized in my mind, at least. And you can see that with you know what's happened with some of the websites that cover Web 2.0, they kind of turn into more about Google, Apple, and whatever. But like, I think this is really about what Web 2.0 is about because you're talking about web apps. And mobile amplifies the value when you see that kind of performance around the I/O. Um, so I'm I'm excited, and I think you know on the community side, what I uh, learned, and I think this was kind of how we branded it in, in our conversation earlier, is that the community I would is, is, has been described here in the cube as respectful and professional. So to me, I think really my observation of the community is it's young, still close knit, but what's really impressive to me, Clint and Alex, is that it's respectful and professional, yeah. and that's going to do really good justice for those guys as they start to reach out, as we heard in the last panel, around working with mm-hmm. other yeah. open source projects, mm-hmm. and it's a very open collaborative approach, very socially integrated, but I like that professionalism. It's a, it's a breath of fresh air, as far as I'm concerned, um, so that's going to be a big plus for them. Yeah, I agree, and, and you know, one of the things that's so, you know, so refreshing here is you do see you see the power of the ecosystem in terms of the services that people are using, you know, and, and how that's helping really helping Node.js grow. For instance, GitHub. I think GitHub's a real kind of catalyst, you know, for for the growth of Node.js. In other ways too, but you know, we have the the, the device market has just exploded, right? And there's all types of different services you can use to either build apps. So that's you know that 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 market where we're going to start to see rapid, you know, the rapid capability to build applications is really I think going to fire this up. Big data, mobile, all those trends are really coming together at a, at a great time. We'll just have to see how big this event is next year. Yeah, I mean, other things that I observed and uh, learned and uh, you know watched is uh, the the systems architectures is a mindset. We've heard that over and over again, that Node is a mindset. You know, the browser, HTTP, uh, is first class citizens, or some quotes. So you got that notion that you got some more systems capabilities with Node, that was impressive. It, it made me think more about those systems challenges that Theo Schlossnager pointed out. Um, and the other thing that I uh, observed, or watched and learned here was the uh, entrepreneurial activity. So, um, and there's two points to that. One is there's a lot of entrepreneurs here who are really doing some coding, doing some good work. The Node Jam here on day two is tons of startups, bootstrapped, at, that highlights the value proposition of cloud computing. You know, low cost to get into the market, and they could rapidly develop and get something out there that's functional and can deliver value. Yes. So I, I'm really impressed with that. Yeah. That being said, I do not think that there's a lot of companies here that are, that are venture backable. I'll tell you yeah. why. A lot of the companies here look like features and they don't look like a real company in my mind in terms of the classic venture capital. So I think traditional venture will reject most of these companies. Instead, the angel market is so robust now with Y Combinator and AngelList, they're all viable under seed and angel funding because the VCs can let those accelerators do the work. But the VCs are struggling with this because, you know, we were talking about it earlier, you know, yesterday and they understand that the cost to actually develop apps is so far less, yeah. and they don't need that much capital. But their funds are not really designed, are not not structured. I got some email. I, I got some emails from some VC friends who knew watching the program, and uh, you know they always watch the cube. But the comment to me was off the record, uh, and I won't name the source of the VC. Was I won't fund any of those companies there. Um, what I'll do is I'll let the angel guys, AngelList and Y Combinator, vet them out for me. 
I found that very interesting, but I think that's consistent around some of the other VCs I talked to. But I'll tell you what's good about all this. One, there's a lot of angel capital out there through AngelList and Y Combinator, so it doesn't cost that much to get these teams formed. However, I think you're going to see more failure than successes, and I think that's actually going to be a good thing. I'll tell you why. This community is so respectful and professional. I think you'll see companies get formed out of those failures. Yes. Mm -hmm. Better companies, because of the experimentation and the tinkering of Node, will create more skills and create, I think, derivative ventures where people will find each other out in the community. Yeah, well there's there's another possible scenario there in, in terms of the venture funding and, and how it could play out though. Uh, you know, we've been seeing a lot more uh, of what people are calling uh, uh, talent acquisitions. I, I forget the, the sort of uh, funny buzzword uh, portmanteau of it, uh, acqui hire, acqui hire, <laughs> yeah, and I think that could be what you see a lot of here because you yeah. said a lot of these look like features. Uh, Web 2.0 went through a lot of that too. Yeah. What, really, what they were doing was they were building something that they wanted to sell to Google. Yeah, and uh, I, I I don't know that a lot of these these guys here are are saying, well, I want this is a feature I want to sell to to Google or Microsoft, but that's still I, I think uh, a a pretty likely outcome for or some just, of these Or things. just frank, frankly, just talent. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. Salesforce.com is growing like crazy through their acquisitions. Yeah, they, they want the talent you know. or they want some of the IP, you know, or, you know, yeah. just one particular feature. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But I think a lot I think of companies right won't, like, won't have a chance to fail because somebody will want to buy them for some for some other reason. And we know, we know how... It's so hard to hire right I mean, now. This, oh, yeah, look, look, at how Twitter, look how Twitter was formed. Twitter was formed because of Evan Williams' failure with Odium, right? And they right. get kicking around. Oh, so guessing. I think when you have these emerging environments where you have these communities, the cross-pollination around the entrepreneurs will be really important. So I think that's what I'm interested in watching as well, is uh, I think failure is not bad here because there's so much skill acquisition that these developers are getting through Node that no matter what their outcome is on their venture, they're going to be viable in any way, whether they go work for a big company or where they hook up with another entrepreneur and do something bigger. So I think the yeah. market will play that out. You know, and I, and I just think my, my final takeaway here is like, this is such a refreshing event. I mean, it's so invigorating to see these people, the really young people developing really amazing stuff. And that, that, that's really what, you know, what it's about, just to be, you know, to, to, to see something and to, ha to have it thought through in whole new dimensions. That is, I mean, that is the true essence of innovation. Yeah, I would, I would agree. I would just say in, in, in closing, this is a great event, a great technology. Uh, one of the most exciting moments as an, as an aside this week uh, here was the fact that we launched DevOps Angle. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So for the folks out there, Alex and Clint have been launching these vertical publications. First one was uh, Services Angle, uh, and the diamond sponsor there is EMC, and that's all about the services and the systems and the critical infrastructure around you know, big enterprise. And this week we launched DevOps Angle, which is all about the emerging cloud, Node.js, these emerging communities that really are going to make a difference in rapid application development. And I couldn't be more pleased, guys, than the validation that we got from Dell. Yes. So Dell, Can I show my t-shirt here? De you show the t-shirt. There we go. Oh. Thank you, Dell. Dell. Thank you very much. Dell Computer <laughs> has stepped up to be the diamond sponsor <laughs> for DevOpsAngle.com, a new publication within the SiliconANGLE network. And so Alex and Clint will be doing double time between DevOps Angle and Services Angle. So we'll have the Ops world covered and the Dev world covered like a blanket. So look for all the coverage on Services Angle and DevOps and Angle. And please reach out to us if you're interested in writing you know, about DevOps or if you're interested in writing about this whole new world of services. We're, we're actively looking for people, either yeah. as contributors or even as writers who we hire on a part-time basis. We'd like to add more sponsors to it. We're going to do it very much like the NASCAR logo, like the events, you know, platinum sponsor, gold, silver, and then we have um, special sponsorships for startups. So um, that helps us build this great content and hire more people. And of course, the Cube, we'd love to go to the events and we're going to, you'll see us more this year at a lot of events. Our next event is coming up at the O'Reilly Strata Conference and that's going to be really a great show because that really continues this conversation about DevOps and cloud with big data. And that is all coming together. It's a beautiful world. It's a great time, guys. It's, uh, you know, we've been doing cloud mobile social for a few years now and everything's coming right into our wheelhouse and uh, it's very exciting times for SiliconANGLE. So, well, thank uh, you very much, John. This has been, yeah. it's, it's great to, to be part of this, this group. Great. Yeah, thanks, John. Thanks, 
Keenan and Mark yeah, are thanks, on the Kenan. other side of the cameras all day, every day. All right, and thank you guys for watching. All the readers out there, SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv. You'll see all the reruns on SiliconAngle.tv. There'll be a channel for there for uh, Node, and uh, we'll advertise that on Twitter. Stay tuned, and if you want more on Twitter, go to Node Summit as the hashtag, and we'll be communicating on that in the back channel um, and uh, publishing more and more content every day. So that's a wrap from uh, Node Summit, live in San Francisco. The innovative Node.js is off off the platform, taking flight, Node Summit is coming to an end. And